This is eHobbyist blog, a log of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. In this video, we will design a negative tracking power supply, then gather and test components to be used in a breadboarded prototype. What I have here is an ideal operational amplifier in an inverting amplifier configuration because that was close to what I need in terms of a negative tracking power supply. It's got two inputs, a minus or inverting input and a plus or non-inverting input and an output and I've diagrammed the power supply of the op amp. The amplification of this ideal op amp is infinity. So any signal applied to the inverting input is amplified by minus infinity, and any signal applied to the positive input is amplified by positive infinity. In addition to that, no current goes into or out of either of the inputs. Together with Kirchhoff's law, one comes to the conclusion <laughs> that in this particular configuration, the output voltage indicated as minus on the extreme right is going to be equal to the negative of the input voltage indicated at the positive on the extreme left multiplied by the feedback uh, impedance over the input impedance, or R2 over R1. So what comes out of this configuration is an inverting amplifier problem with operational amplifiers and the problem with resistors in various and sundry components is they're not ideal. Let me take a look at the non-ideality of the two resistors. The output is going to be based on the ratio of R2 to R1. That ratio should be 1.00000, etc. How am I going to get that? Because I use 5% resistors. So what I'm going to do is use a trimmer. Another problem with non-ideality of the op-amp is the notion that no current goes into or out of any of the inputs of the op-amp. In fact, current does come in and go out, although it's relatively small. Uh, that current can be expressed as a differential voltage depending on the impedances. One can make an assumption that current going into or out of the inverting input is the same as a current coming into or out of the non-inverting input. In other words, the bias is the same for both ends of this differential amplifier, the op amp. And that's going to be expressed as a voltage dependent on the impedance that each one of these inputs sees. To eliminate the effect of this current bias, make things such that each input sees the same impedance. The impedance that the inverting input sees is R1 and roughly half of R3, so we're talking about 20.5, in parallel with R2 and roughly half of R3, 20.5, so that the parallel impedance to ground is 10.250K. To make this balance, the non-inverting input would have to see the same impedance to ground and so 10k from ground to the non-inverting input. Any effect on the output voltage of one input would be canceled by the other. Even if you've got the current biases balanced, when you have the input grounded, you would expect to see the same voltage, zero, at the output, but you won't. In general, you'll see some offset, and that depends on a particular op-amp. What I have diagrammed here is a 741 op amp, and I intend to start with that for a number of reasons. Uh, primarily because I've got a half a dozen of them laying around doing nothing. Second, pinout for 741 is pretty standard, so if at some later point I decide 741 is not the, the place to go, I can swap a pin-compatible higher-grade op-amp in. But in general, my principle is a op-amp in the hand is worth an infinite number of op-amps in somebody's online catalog. If I choose a 741, a 741 has internally a provision for nulling the voltage offset. With a 10-turn potentiometer, one can null out the voltage offset such that when the input is grounded, you get zero out. 
So once I've nulled out the voltage offset, I can then put the highest level signal I'm going to be using this thing for at the plus input and then adjust so that for, say, 25 volts in, I'm going to get minus 25 volts out. There are several other things I need to make provision for. One of them is that I want to do a little bit more in getting rid of ripple voltage coming in from the rectifier filter board. And there is also this problem that I noted earlier that if the power supply is being provided to a rapidly varying load, the regulator may not be able to keep pace with it. And unless you try to deal with that, the regulator can go into oscillation. I deal with it using a set of parallel capacitors these sets of capacitors indicated here not only serve as another half-wave rectifier smoothing out the ripple, it also tends to prevent oscillation if the smallest capacitor is very close to the pins of the IC. There is a problem of range. That is, this op amp, if used as a negative power supply, can go down to negative 25, but how high can it go? Well, for an op amp like a 741, it can't come any closer to V plus than 3 volts. And the way I intend to deal with that is to raise V plus, so that V plus in this case, using uh, L7805, is 5 volts above ground, common, then the 741 can easily go from minus 25 volts to ground and still have some leeway. Next, I want to be able to smooth out the output of the 741 so that for very high frequency variations in load, I'm still going to have a relatively steady output voltage, even though the 741 can't respond to 100 megahertz square wave output load. The capacitors might be enough to smooth the output sufficiently. And once I stuff capacitors on the output, I want to have a leading resistor to facilitate adjustment. So that's what C8, 9, and 10 is about, and what R6 is about. The only problem with the inverting amplifier I have to be used as a tracking negative supply is that the 741 itself can't output more than about 10, maybe 20 milliamps. I need a minimum of 500 milliamps. We need to boost the current output capability of the 741, and the way I'm going to do that is with a pair of uh, transistors, PNP and NPN, in a Ziglai configuration, which should boost you know, that current on up to uh, 10 amps for the 2N3055. I'm using this to be very similar to the circuitry that's used with a variable positive power supply. I want a tracking negative supply to be essentially the same so that both of these will be subject to the same kind of response to the environment. 10 amp in theory, yes. However, you would have to have, of course, a transformer secondary capable of providing 10 amps, a bridge rectifier capable of providing 10 amps, and a heat sink capable of dissipating the amount of heat generated by something like this worst case, at 25 volts in, it would have to dissipate 250 watts or more. Actually more if you look at the actual voltage of, of Vn minus. Finally, we want some current limiting in the circuit. If you are prototyping a particular circuit, you may want to limit the maximum current so that if something goes wrong, you don't french fry your prototype. Power supply itself will cut short at some specified current, and so that's what these uh, resistors R8, R9, R10, and R11 are about. R10 together with R11 allows some adjustment from the maximum down to almost nothing. R8 establishes the maximum current you can get out of it, and with a 0.62 ohm resistor, the maximum is 1 amp. When I breadboarded the associated positive supply using these same values for resistors, I found that my maximum was 0.9, and that's okay, because my original expects were for 0.5 amps, and the fact that I get 0.9 out is acceptable. Having drawn a circuit diagram, I start off by generating a list, a uh, bill of materials, and then uh, gather all the components, hopefully not have to buy anything and list them with their values noted. Recently, part of my workflow is use a component tester to test each and every one of these in turn. 
Now, some of these components uh, need to be fairly accurate. Others, like bypass capacitors, well, you know, uh, plus or minus 5% or 10% is fine. Electrolytic filter capacitors, well, within 50% is okay with me. I'll get this tantalum capacitor. The polarity of these electrolytics needs to be observed with this particular component tester. I had these capacitors in my bins marked at 35 volts and uh, very small. Try this disk capacitor. Okay, that's quite close. Now, let's check these diodes. I like this component test that it establishes the directionality of the diodes. Now we'll start testing some of these resistors. These are the input and feedback resistors that should be reasonably accurate. At 20K, there's 20.11, and the second one is 29. No good. Let me just mark that as something that I need to follow up on, and now test the, the pots. One of these potentiometers is going to be used to trim the input and feedback resistor, and the second pot is going to be used to uh, null out voltage offset. There's the voltage offset pot. This is kind of cumbersome. I need to change the values and hit the run button every time and check the values on the two sides. Still testing resistors. 1K. 996 ohms is good enough for me. Now let me try this pot. This is used to adjust the current limiting and should be 50 ohms. And component tester says <laughs> 35 and 14. 2N3906 transistor and 2N3906. Now the, the power transistor, 2N30, actually it's an MJE3055, equivalent to a 2N355. The beta on this is 17. The beta on the other one was close to 200, the 2N2209. And when in a Ziklai configuration, is one multiplied by the other, as I understand it. So we have the component. In this video, I drew a circuit diagram for a negative tracking power supply, and I rounded up and tested the components needed to build it. In the next video, we will start work breadboarding and testing the circuit. If you like this video and the idea of the channel, click on the YouTube thumbs up icon. If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, make corrections to published videos, or voice your opinion on related matters, then leave a YouTube comment. If you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form, such as high-res graphics, files in different formats, lists of references, uh, go to the corresponding website. Until the next time, good day.